From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thank you for joining me today. Today, my guest is Bruce Marciano. You've seen him in a bunch of films as Jesus, but today he's just Bruce. Bruce, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Rick. It's great to be with you. I love the introduction. You never know how you're going to get introduced. I like that one. That's a first in, there you uh, go. what, 25 years. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad I got to be a first at something. I love it. Yeah, today's just Bruce. You know, you know him as Jesus. That must be. Uh, I'm sure you get this asked all the time, but being referred to as Jesus, uh, yeah. Gee, do you ever get a complex about that? Well, um, I have heard it a million times. I've heard every Jesus joke there is. Uh, you know, I always, from day one, just have considered it a tremendous honor to represent the Lord in this unique way. Um, and I think, you know, 99% of the time people are pretty respectful and, you know, uh, and respectful of both him and, and the work that I do. So I've only had a couple uncomfortable moments with it. Uh, but for the most part, it's just been a real honor and a pleasure. Wonderful. We know you as an actor and then an author and now a speaker. And so I guess it was kind of in that order. Uh, is that right in the progression of uh, going from actor to author to speaker? Actually, the speaking started uh, before the writing. Um, you know, I did my first Jesus movie, and uh, it was a scary long time ago. I did it in 1993. It was released here in the States in 95. And um, almost immediately on the film's release, I started getting invitations to speak. And, uh, uh, and out of, and that was, you know, my first step into, uh, into the ministry arm of what I do. And then, um, and then the writing came later. I came to realize that the, uh, experience the Lord gave me in, uh, in that first film called the gospel of Matthew was just, it was tremendous ministry value to it. So I took it to pen and paper. And that started the writing. And that was the, was it the Visual Bible series? Is that what that was called? That was the original name of it, yes. Uh, and the film that I did was The Gospel of Matthew. Um, the film has changed hands, and the Visual Bible company has since been dissolved. I don't know too much about it. Um, you know, I was just a hired actor. Um, but the exciting thing to me is, is, is all the ministry that's flowed out of it. And to be in the middle of that is really very exciting. Where, where has that movie gone? How, how many people have seen that movie? Oh gosh. Uh, millions at least. Uh, I might even say tens of millions. Um, I know that in China alone. Uh, the distribution has exceeded like three or four million copies of it. Um, you know, uh, uh, we shot that movie in 1993. And to this day, not a day goes by that I don't get an email across Facebook or across my website uh, from someone saying, I saw this movie and, uh, it changed my life. So the enduring legacy of, uh, of the film and for your listeners that aren't familiar with the film, what we did was we made a movie of the gospel of Matthew, literally word for word. So the concept of the film was not a Jesus movie, but, but the gospel, the power of God's word and uh, and I'm convinced that therein is its uh, its enduring ministry. And what an amazing uh, opportunity to play Jesus in that in that movie that has touched so many people. And and then they did uh, did they do Acts as well? Did it- they did the Book of Acts that followed? Uh, and um, and that was all they did. Years later, the production company it was sold and bought and sold and bought, went through a few hands. And one of the subsequent owners also did the Gospel of John. 
Uh, but uh, that was the end of the visual Bible. Okay. <laughs> I hesitate just because it's kind of a sad story. Right. I don't know too much about the business end of things. All I know is uh, is is what we did was pretty wonderful, and I'm very thankful for it. Well, I'd like to, if you don't mind, uh, you know, we've got some time on the show. I'd like to kind of go back to the beginning of, uh, of your life and how you got into acting and then how you ended up, uh, you know, as a believer. Could we just kind of transition, uh, you know, into that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was born and raised in Southern California, which is very unusual. Most people that live here, they moved here from some colder place. <laughs> I'm one of the, uh, I'll make a joke here, one of the 17 people that was actually born and raised here. Hey. And, uh, uh, you know, I grew up in what is now Orange County, but back then it was uh, suburban development in the middle of orange groves. And um, I was raised Catholic. My father is Italian and my mother uh, Syrian. And, um, and I was a good little Catholic boy. Uh, went to Catholic schools. Uh, was a good little altar boy. <laughs> I did the whole route. And uh, <laughs> went to uh, Catholic high school, an all-boys Catholic high school. Um, and, and all to say that I, I, I grew up with a – with a general knowledge of God and that God exists. And, you know, he was kind of an ever present, uh, uh, reality in my life. Now I'm going to guess that most of your mis listeners, if not all of them know that uh, there's a big difference between a general knowledge of God and a living born again relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Um, I went on to college, Cal state Fullerton, Cal state university at Fullerton, I entered uh, college as a performing arts major my first time on stage. I was 13 years old, and, uh, and I had one line in a play called Oliver. <laughs> and I can remember uh, how much I enjoyed that. And I knew from that moment on I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> and uh, so I entered college as a performing arts major. Um, ended up graduating with a degree in economics. My parents were uh, very practical, very blue collar, and um, and they just insisted I get a more practical degree. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'm actually so thankful to them for it. At the time, I didn't get it, but uh, thank you, Lord, for parents who uh, who saw the long, <laughs> you know, the long long road ahead. But, yes. Uh, so I graduated with a degree in economics, and then very few people know this about me. I just loved school. I loved college life, and, uh, and I wanted to keep going. So, um, so I went on to law school. Why law school? Well, <laughs> uh, I was dating a girl whose father was a lawyer, and, um, and I remember he sat me down and uh, – you know, he was very typical kind of lawyer with the big cigar and everything <laughs> and, uh, and the bad rug on his head, real colorful character. And he had the gravelly voice and he just said, why don't you go on to law school? You know, you know, and uh, OK, I, I just I just wanted to keep going to school. So I ended well, up beats, going to law school. It beats having to get a job, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I went on to law school and um and I actually passed the bar exam. And you and graduated. Kind of you graduated law school. I graduated law school, passed the bar exam, and this is kind of interesting. Even though I didn't have a relationship with the Lord, I just, I still had this sense of the leadership of God in my life, and it was so interesting when I when I passed the bar. None of my friends passed the bar, <laughs> and they were all desperate to be lawyers. Me, I, I wasn't desperate to be a lawyer, and I passed it. And I, and I remember thinking, you know, maybe this is what God wants for me. And, and so I launched into uh, uh, my career as an attorney, and I got hired on by a criminal defense firm. And um, – I hated it from day one. I just hated it. <laughs> but my parents had also instilled in me this, you know, when you start something, you finish it mentality. 
and uh, another trait and value I'm very thankful they handed down to me. So I thought, you know, I'm going to stick this out and, uh, and see it through. And I lasted about two years. And at the end of two years, I resigned and, uh, and my wheel started spinning. And I thought, I'm just going to go back to my first love. I was 25 years old at the time. Wow, and, I didn't know that. You're, you're listening to the Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. My guest today is actor, author, and speaker Bruce Marciano. And Bruce is uh, kind of giving his story here of, of how he started. And so uh, 25 years old, we get out of law school, and you decide to go back into acting. What happens from there? You know, I started taking some local acting classes and just kind of renewing my first love. And uh and launched into a career. Um, you know, I didn't have to move cross country or anything. You know, I was living in Southern California. So, uh, you know, I just started reaching out, trying to make contacts with agents and, and whatnot, and got my first job on a show called Murder, She Wrote in 1984. And, uh, boy, I thought I'd hit the big time. I had two lines, I think. And <laughs> hey, look, you, you've gone from Oliver, one line, and then you go to Angela Lansbury, Murder, She Wrote, and you go to two lines. You've already doubled. I'm telling you, I was just, <laughs> there's nowhere to go but straight up, baby. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what happens next. <laughs> you know, I just kept uh, getting these little jobs going from episodic show uh, to show. Uh, L.A. Law I did, Columbo I did, a show called Hardball with Stacey Cage. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Columbo, how, yeah. Many lines, how many lines did you have on Columbo? I think on Columbo I had about four lines. I think on Hardball I think I had – Probably about fifteen lines. Look, which is, see, which we go from one time. one line to two to <laughs> now four with Columbo, then Hardball up to fifteen. I mean, this is amazing. Look how it's how the how the trajectory of your career. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's an <laughs> actor's life. You know, it's interesting, Rick, because most people have this impression of what an actor's life is like, and. Uh, all I can say is I can blow that impression sky high. You just have no idea <laughs> the, uh, what it's like to just to go months without working, to uh, to walk around with five dollars in your pocket, to not know where your next uh, job is going to come from. Uh, you know the competition is remarkable, and it sounds so funny, but the competition for fifteen lines on Hardball is like there's. There's hundreds of thousands of guys that want that job. And um, so it's a pretty tough life. And I'm just thankful for the grace to have uh, to have progressed. And uh, and then I started scratching at some pretty great opportunities. I remember screen testing for some big movies at Universal. Uh, and when you're screen testing, it's like it's like in baseball, you're you're. You're in the lineup, you're up at bat, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get in that lineup. So I actually uh, uh, was was swinging the bat at some pretty big opportunities for a while. And um, none of them panned out because they're obviously this competition is so intense at that level. To make a long story short, um, there was a writer's strike that hit when my career started peaking. And suddenly all production in L.A. stopped. And I found myself without work, without anything, with $5 in my pocket. And here's the big boom, boom. Uh, it was in the pit of that desperation that I reached out to the Lord. It was my life had pretty much fallen apart. Mm -hmm. And... And a lot of guys had shared Jesus with me over the years. And, and I guess it all kind of took root because I literally by myself one day, I realized, you know, I built my life on things that can be shattered and I, I needed Jesus. And I literally got down on my knees and cried out to Jesus, you've got to save me. That was in 1989. And, uh, and, and the rest is history. It was like he just grabbed me by the collar and it was off to the races. And obviously the difference between just having a, you know, a functioning awareness of God to a living relationship with Jesus was the difference between day and night. 
Um, do you remember where you were? Do you remember where you were when, uh, when that happened? Yes. Yes. I was, there's a, uh, a hill above universal studios and it's a very quiet place. And I used to go up there just to kind of get my thoughts together. And I, and you could actually look down on universal studios and, um, and it was on that hill. I, and, and I remember actually looking down and then looking up and back and forth. It was like I was making a decision. What's going to be the Lord of my life? Is Jesus going to be the Lord of my life or is my career going to be the Lord of my life? And I literally got down on my knees in the dirt on that hill and uh, cried out to Jesus. Oh, beautiful. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. My guest today, Bruce Marciano, the actor, author, and speaker. So, Bruce, after you came to the Lord, you had this amazing, what a beautiful testimony of this story of how Christ uh, found you and uh, healed you and restored you. Uh, can you talk about then what happened after that? Yeah, uh, almost immediately. In fact, not almost, but immediately the Lord just began to to show himself to me. And I hesitated there because I don't want to sound weird or anything like that. Just in the circumstances of my life, I could see his hand working in my life and, and he just just showing himself is very real to me. And, uh, and, and I dove into my born again life. I remember I plugged into uh, a, a church called church on the way. In those days, it was pastored by Jack Hayford, who many of your listeners may know. Um, and it's just a very th- thriving church. And I plugged in, man. I was going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday evenings, uh, and, pro- you know, home groups and everything. And, and just really dove into the Lord. And, um, that's where, I, that's where I met my wife was at church on the way. Is it really? Wow. Yep. I met my wife. What, what year well, were you there? What year were you there? Uh, 1989, uh, all the way through, uh, you know, Pastor Jack retired. And then um, and then his son-in-law took over. And I think it was, I think it was in, I, I don't remember when his son-in-law. Uh, Scott Bauer. Uh, Scott Bauer just suddenly passed mm-hmm. away. An aneurysm. Uh, yeah. And I can't remember what year it was, but. Hmm. Um, around that time, I, I was, I was traveling a lot. And so, uh, uh, I kind of lost touch with the church a little bit because I was literally living out of a suitcase, uh, year round by that time. Um, so whenever pastor Scott passed on, uh, I, I kind of, uh, you know, um, I was just traveling all the time. Yeah. That and, church, that church was like going to Bible college. Jack, Jack would teach like for 45 minutes, an hour on Sunday night. On Wednesday night, he'd teach for like an hour. You know, Rick, I am constantly in conversations with believers, and I'll say something that I learned from him. And to me, it's just second nature. And they'll look at me like, I've never heard that before. Yeah. And, and I'm, and, you know, the education that we got was remarkable. Mm-hmm. And if I may, I just, I just cry tears for the loss of that generation of Bible teachers, uh, Jack Hafer, Chuck Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- there there was a generation there that I, you know, I don't want to get into it, but I just, I just cry for the lack of that kind of of teaching that we used to get. I just don't see that kind of leadership. I'll tell you, and I I know, you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm on the radio station, get the bot radio app because they're all on bot radio. I'm just telling you, you, RC Sproul, Alistair Begg. uh, I mean, it goes on and on. Amazing, amazing teachers. And uh, you can get the bot radio app on your, on your iPhone. If it's, if it's not in your area and man, oh man, it's awesome. And I'm just, you know, I would say that even if I wasn't on, on the, the, the station. <laughs> yeah. And I want to, I didn't know that. And now that I know, I really want to encourage your listeners. You know, there's so much that we get today that's just kind of motivational speaking and feel good preaching. It's just lacking meat. It's just lacking 
you know, just the fullness of the word of God. And these guys that are on your app, uh, uh, these guys are going to lead your listeners deep into God's word. So I just really want to back that up and encourage your listeners to go for that. Awesome. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. And uh, my guest today, Bruce Marciano, the actor, author, and speaker. Uh, he's He's been in, I don't know, you've, how many times have you been Jesus in, in a film? About 15 times, a dozen times? I think it's about 15. I haven't 15? counted myself, but I, I hear it's about 15, but 16, something like he's that. He's been Jesus, but today he's just Bruce. <laughs> Get you a T-shirt, just Bruce. Uh, maybe that'll be the title of my next next book just bruce <laughs> bruce not so almighty there you go i like that one there you go you nailed it bruce. well done bruce not so almighty so uh okay i'm sorry we're, we're, we're just we're totally see how this goes this you just never know where we're going on this show uh so we're church on the way you've come to the lord you're you're in bible college basically going to church on the way getting amazing teaching being fed into you the word of god and then uh you know what happens to your life from there well part of the whole thing is you know i mentioned my father's italian my mother's syrian my father's from jersey my mother's from the northeast so i kind of add that uh that dark thing, you know what I mean? And because of that, I, I got, uh, I was typecast in kind of mobster kind of roles. Um, and, um, and the Lord just began, uh, massaging into my understanding. I don't want you to play those kinds of roles anymore. And, um, and I'll never forget a conversation with a friend of mine. I wasn't finding work. And, and I, I said to him, you know, I think the Lord wants me to start playing nice guys. And the <laughs> next the next role I got was the role of Jesus, the nicest, quote, guy, end <laughs> quote, ever to walk the planet. So uh, um, so the Lord led me uh, in that direction. And and uh, the way the Jesus film came together, uh, it's a bit of a long story, but um, I heard through the grapevine uh, that they were casting a Jesus movie and the director was looking for a born again actor, a guy who loved the Lord, which is actually, if you look at all the guys he played, it's actually like, gee, what a novel idea mm-hmm. actually get somebody who actually knows the Lord. And, um, uh, and, and to make a long story short, I reached out to the director and uh, when I shook his hand, I walked into the meeting and I just I just knew this was what God had for me. And if he were on, uh, you know, line with you, he would say the same thing that he the Lord spoke to him in that moment. This is the guy. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was uh, bearded <laughs> and uh, on a plane for Morocco, having memorized every word that Jesus spoke as recorded by uh, the Apostle Matthew. Wow, what a great <laughs> job. Unbelievable. Talk about a journey through God's Word. Talk about, you know, the Word of God being living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, you know, my life was just fundamentally changed Mm. just by virtue of ingesting his word uh, on that level. And then you add on to it all the study I had to do and, and, and my prayer life, you know, suddenly I, I found myself just crying out to Jesus in my prayer life just to reveal himself to me. Um, and that's a whole other story, how, uh, how I'd never, never really taken the time to get to know the Lord. It's like Jesus is one of those figures. Everybody thinks they just know everything about him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, faced with the prospect of portraying him, the thing that really hit me is, is that with all the church I'd done, I'd never taken the time to to seek out who he really really is so that's a whole that's you know what that a great first book yeah I, what so a great character study uh, to oh, study my goodness no. yeah and just a journey into his heart and his priorities and motivations and his human realities and well let me ask uh, you a question i sorry to yeah. interrupt you because because we're out of time that's not good and this is this is what happens all the time i'll talk to people and go what that we're out of time 
Let me ask you this, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. I can I can edit this out if you don't want, want this in. Could we do another show? We can do 10 more shows, Rick. Can we do a part two? But only 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not yes. going to do 10, but we are going to do a part two. So tell you what, folks. Love to do part two. We're going to... If you want to hear more, you got to come back next week because we're going to have Bruce here next week and we're going to finish this because this is just too good. Bruce, thanks so much for being on the show. I can't wait to get the update on, on this. I really appreciate you being here. You're a blessing, man. I look forward to it. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening.